Hello, this is William here. I, uh, I'm working, as you can see, on a triple chime hammer assembly. And we got a little problem going on, and this is fairly common. So the action of the pin barrel coming around and lifting these hammers, uh, groove has been worn into these hammer tails. And what's happened here is they've played the one particular tune more than others and then they want to change it and some of these have deeper grooves than others. And the hammers are lifting funny. Also, what's happening is it's kind of an erratic motion when they're getting lifted, when they're kind of getting stuck and, and then dropping and things like that. So it's causing some problems. This is common. This will happen. So I have a quick solution. I want to try and make this quick for you. I've made a little jig. What I use is my watchmaker's lathe. I've got the T-rest holder here. And I've made a table. I've made several tables. I got a bunch of blank tables. I made a whole pile of these at one time. Uh, basically some tool steel here uh, with a shoulder and jam it through a hole, rivet it over or solder it in, whatever you want to do, get it flat. That slips right into here and you can use it for all kinds of different operations. This one, basically for these, all you have to do is have a pivot point and a stop. Here's the pivot point. It's a not a super snug fit but it's tight and then a stopping area so you can you can move that only so far the table I just ground this out it's nothing fancy there's no particular reason here um, on these hammer tails you want to address this face right here and then you also want to address the very top of it because that groove actually wears over the top and that's where we get the different uh, drop-off points on these things when they're worn. We'll use a cutoff blade from a Dremel on a small arbor and we'll use that to grind away each you surface. You can kind of see that right there. Right there. And then on the top. See how that's going in a little groove right there. But wait a minute. If you do that, your hammers won't lift as far as they did before. Because you're taking material away. Uh, there's a adjustment for that and we can readjust this we're gonna have to adjust our return springs where those are and then we'll have to bend the hammers back a little bit we'll just bend them back I'll show you how that works we'll make it quick <laughs> hopefully like that. Okay. Now, we'll do the rest of them 
I won't bore you with all of that. And we should have exactly the same angle on all these faces. Then we'll come back and do the tops. They all look pretty good. They're all the same. I gave it a little test with the pin barrel. Now we're going to set up to do the top of these. This is a little trickier because we have the hammer rods on here and they might get in the way of me setting up. I want to end up flat. I want a little bit more off the top of that. Just a smidgen. Okay. There. That looks pretty good. I'm going to test that piece with the pin barrel and just see where everything's at. Nice surface here on our leading edge. This is our drop off edge top of it. Nice there. There's still a little bit of material here which is going to polish out with the burnisher. I can feel that burr on there. I'm going to get rid of that. Let me give it a test and I'll be right back. Okay, back to the bench. So, all these look pretty good. If I run my fingernail on here, I can feel that burr right there. And there's a little bit of burr on the, on the side here too. So I'm gonna use my pivot uh, file and burnisher for clock pivots. And I've got a little holder. I like using a holder because I can twist and turn it whichever way. Very, very lightly, I will uh, take off these burrs with the file a little bit. I don't want to remove any more material. Even though burnishing is going to remove some material, I think Might we'll be safe that. if we're... Anyway, uh, just real quick, a uh, couple of light... Just to get rid of those burrs. That spring keeps coming up here. There. Okay, pretty good. So we'll do all those and we'll be back. And what I want to look at is how far the hammers are being lifted. Now, all the, of course all the hammer heads are not adjusted properly. Return spring here, there's these little fingers underneath, we'll zoom in. These little fingers right here, which can be bent either up or down to give it a certain amount of return. Okay. Now, what I want to look at, I, it looks like I need to go through this a little bit. That one looks a little low. 
or has, isn't going quite as far as the others. So we just want all those to drop down into the same spot by looking and eyeballing the relationship of all these lining up. That is, if they're all the same size. So eyeballing this, it looks like one's a little lower than the others and one's a little higher than the others. I'll make that adjustment. Let's do this one right here. It doesn't take a whole lot. There, that lined it right up. And then this first one can be brought up a little bit. There, that's pretty close. Uh, you look down the line there. Down this line. Right here. And we'll adjust all our hammers uh, later. Those are made to be bent. So, we'll look at, uh, just by putting this in a certain spot, we'll look at how far those hammers lift. Without the springs on right now. but there's pretty good action left on there. That looks pretty good to me. If there's any more tweaking to be done, I can, I can do that later after it gets put back on the movement. Let's go do that. Okay, we have the movement all set up. We have uh, hammer assembly installed here. Everything's adjusted. And I just wanna test the action which you'll be able to see down here. I'm gonna zoom in. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. You're gonna see down here the pieces that we worked on to get a smooth lifting action. Um, so we'll just run it here. Okay, that looks pretty good. We adjusted the little fingers under here so that uh, them little fingers we saw earlier so that all the, the um, hammer tails were even. Okay, now once we get it put in the test stand and on the movement there's another adjustment you can make, which um, works pretty good for how hard the hammers are gonna hit. This piece right here is got a flat on each side. If you put a wrench on here, I'm gonna widen that shot out a little bit. Oops. Put a wrench on here okay basically we're we're adjusting all those fingers at the same time because they're attached to this pillar right here okay now if it's misaligned and it's lifting them way too high you'll see that right off the bat and you'll have troubles with it. So you want them to lift enough to give you a good strike, not too little so it doesn't hit hard enough and make a noise, and not too strong so they're um, getting jammed up in here. Here, we'll run this again. You can see these hammers. I might have to get a different angle on all this. 
So by manipulating this post, it twists all those fingers in uh, the two different directions that can give you a stronger hammer strike or a weaker hammer strike. Um, and now we're set. I kind of like that. If you get too strong of a hammer strike, then it might struggle to function. Um, as I'm testing this, we're getting a nice even lifting and dropping of the hammers a lot better than it was before. There. Now you might say that that's a lot of monkey business for uh, working on these, but uh, this customer is or was a music teacher, I think. She mentioned something like that. Really nice lady. Like all music teachers are really nice. I, uh, I know she's got an ear for uh, the tune. Now, a customer might be used to the way that their clock is striking, even if it's wrong, and they may want it left alone. If, uh, if it's struggling to run and you don't make uh, some of those repairs uh, because things are catching funny or it's, the grooves are way too deep, then uh, it's a good practice to know how to take care of it. You might think it's a lot of farting around. Really, by the time you make your little table, get that taken care of. You can use it whenever. But it shouldn't take more than uh, 20 minutes to go through a uh, triple chime hammer assembly and get it just right. So you'll have happy customers and you'll be happy because you won't be going back and forth and redoing stuff. Anyway, I think this one's all set. Thanks for watching and uh, have a good day. See you soon.